Hey peeps and welcome to Star Wars Starfighters where I give you a basic summary of everything you need to know about some of the starfighters used in the Star Wars universe. And as always, I do my best to make sure everything I say is still part of the official Star Wars canon. Alright, and let's just dive straight in with one of my favourite uh, starfighters in the Star Wars universe, the Z-95 Headhunter. The fighter, the very fighter that the X-Wing, the legendary X-Wing was based off of. Now, although it, this fighter had actually long been obsolete, by the time of the Galactic Civil War, almost every respectable star pilot still had a place in their heart for the good old trusty Z-95 Headhunter. And one of the most enduring, it was one of the most enduring and dependable single pilot starfighters ever designed. And its multi-purpose air space fighter was the result of an engineering collaboration between two of the leading starship manufacturers of the pre-imperial era. Incom Corporation, who was an established starship manufacturer, whose later designs would ultimately include the T-16 Skyhopper, like Luke Skywalker used to use back on Tatooine to bullseye Womp Rats, the T-47 Snowspeeder, like the ones that pretty much yet the rep once rebels used on Hoth, and the ultimately the acclaimed T-65 X-Wing. And Subpro, who employed equally proficient Starship engineers operating in the mid-room of the galaxy, but their exclusive designs were rarely seen at the core systems. Now, by combining their efforts, Incom and Subpro actually produced a fighter design, the durability and popularity of which uh, would outlast many of the pilots who flew them. Although eventually superseded by newer, faster ships, such as the A-Wing and X-Wing fighters, the Z-95 remained a popular choice with discerning old-school spacefarers right through to the end of the Galactic Civil War, and even sometime after it. Now, particularly the later model, the Z-95 AF-4, which was a bit smaller than the one that you see used in... Um, the later seasons of the Clone Wars. Now, in appearance, the Headhunter resembled a, it pretty much did resemble a primitive X-wing, and in many respects, could be considered a prototype of the famous Starfighter. It featured the familiar T-shaped space frame with its angular aerofoils, slender nose cone, and snub nose sensor module at its tip. A bubble-shaped canopy located midway along the fuselage provided its occupant with an excellent field of view with laser cannons mounted on the wingtips completed the craft's dagger-like profile. Now, the original Z-95 Mark I models, as seen um, being used by the Republic during the Clone Wars, and that they only had a twin, twin iron fission engine nacelles and swing wings or little, like, little uh, wings or fins on the side of its, on the side of the nose down, down near the nose end that um, well, pretty much just served the craft in its primary capacity as an atmospheric fighter. But later, a space adapted variants abandoned this feature in favor of sturdier fixed aerofoils. And Incom and Subpro actually continued to improve and upgrade the easily repaired and customized design with each successive production year. And as, as a result of that, there were very few Z95s made that were exactly the same as one another. The uh, faster quad nacelled headhunters replaced the twin engine Mark 1s and later models such as the Z95 AGF assault fighter also featured significant upgrades uh, the, which included holographic tactical displays and Incom 2A fission engines, advanced armor and shielding and heavy weaponry such as Taman Bark KX-5 laser cannons which were quite powerful. Tim and Buck were well known for making their powerful. They made pretty much all the p big powerful turbulizers you saw on the Star, uh, star Destroyers. And it also had the Krupp X MG5 concussion missile launchers, giving the fighter an even bigger punch. Although the Z95 was eventually deposed by Incom's finest achievement, which was the legendary T65 X-Wing, and, uh, and although the X-Wing used many of the same systems, the Headhunter could not compete with the newer ships, um, new and 
vastly superior speed, firepower, and most importantly, its hyperdrive capability. And come the time of the Battle of Yavin, the X-Wings had all but replaced all the Z-95s in the main alliance fleet. Although the older ships continued to provide defense for remote rebel outposts, so. Uh, headhunters also served as training vehicles for potential X-Wing Y-Wing pilots. Re Rebellion um, held onto a couple of Z-95, well, they referred to them Z-95 XT trainers, which were pretty much just standard Z uh, Z-95 models with twin seats instead of a single for a pilot and instructor. And the standardized income cockpit layout actually ena ena enabled pilots to acclimatize easily to the similar controls of the X-Wing. And although Z-95s also featured in the ar arsenals of merchant and pirate fleets, and there were modified headhunters that were often privately owned by freelance spacers, careers, and mercenaries, now, that such, a de such demanding individuals actually favoured the venerable headhunter is an actual testament to the vehicle's excellent performance, reliability, and strength. Now, during its prime, it was an excellent fighter, it did everything right. The only reason it would stop being used because the X was because the X Wing came along and took the Z ninety five and just improved everything and made it all better, which is why the X Wing itself became a legendary starfighter. But before the X Wing came along, it was the Z ninety five headhunter that was a must have for everyone, all pilots. And there you have it, that's everything you need to know about the Z ninety five headhunter. Uh, be sure to Drop a like and subscribe to keep up to date with uh, all my latest videos so you don't miss out. And um, I'll catch you all in the next one, guys. See you later. Oh, and if you have any questions or you want, feel like watching me play some video games, I stream on Twitch now and then. Not very often because between making these videos and work and real life, it, I am a bit busy and don't often get to stream on Twitch, but I am on Twitch at Tenopia1138. So, I'll catch you guys all in the next one. See you later.